Hi guys, so yeah, it's that time of year again where instead of showing you games that I've wasted my money on over the last few weeks, I'm going to be actually showing you games I've actually played over the last few months and got my money's worth out of them. Yeah, I know, it's crazy, isn't it? I actually do play some of these games. Not enough though, really. Uh, and that's why we actually do this thing called 52, 52 Game Challenge where we try and complete one game every week over a space of a year. And... So I mark it all down in my little uh, notepad every time I complete a game and hopefully I get to that fabled number. So let's see how well I did. I know this isn't a video that everyone would like but I just like to have an excuse to talk about the games I've played really. So yeah, uh, first up, what did I play? Um, so the first game was actually a digital only game. Well, not It was a digital only game at the time but it has now been since released physically and that was... Oh, I always get this flipping wrong. I need This is why I need the physical game so I can get it right. Horizon Chase Zero, or Dawn. Horizon Chase. You'll know what it is. I'll put a flipping video somewhere anyway. But yeah, oh my goodness, that game was absolutely fantastic. It was a PlayStation Network download game. It was the last one I probably played properly before I got rid of the network. And oh my word. It, it's, it's basically an outrun, but like made a bit more modern. So it, it's very basic in like look and probably gameplay for some people but there is such an addictive nature to that game um the the colors on the screen are just fantastic the music is pretty good it's like 8-bit chiptune kind of music and the whole package is just fantastic and i just had to get i think well, i think you get a super trophy you get gold to win and then you have to have like these little things that you have to do while you complete like make sure that you have a certain amount of fuel pick up some stars or whatever it is to be honest it was it was six months ago since i played it so the details are a little bit off but like you need to get all these little things to get the super trophies and i went and got all of them for every track and there's there was quite a lot of tracks to be fair i think there was about 10 continents and uh six different tracks on each one i think that's how they say it out anyway maybe even more i can't remember but yeah fantastic game i really recommend anyone going out to buy it or play it so yeah next up we have got so that was a bit out of order um but because i'll only forget <laughs> um so the rest are pretty much in order of how i played them so next up we played gravity falls on the um 3ds so this game absolutely looks fantastic i don't know why i'm opening up i'm not sure i'm not here to show you what i bought <laughs> uh, so yeah this is a great game uh, in the fact that it looks beautiful but there's something just about the mechanics i just got bored very soon after playing it but if you can pick it up cheap it is probably pretty good and uh, i think this is based on a cartoon on i'm trying to think disney it is so yeah um, interesting title to play now Going from an interesting title to a fantastic title, and that is uh, another level 5 game, Nino Kuni 2. So I just play, completed one of their previous level 5 games on PlayStation 2, and then I went to this, which is a bit strange in the fact that this obviously got more space, it looked beautiful, but everything was like text-based. Uh, there wasn't much speaking in this game. Um, especially compared to the last one as well which i found and i just found it just was a bit odd going from that and as well i was playing another game which has got to have an honorable mention which is the shimigami tensei 4 apocalypse on the 3ds um sometimes yeah sometimes i can actually say the names of the games as well it's crazy isn't it um but i couldn't complete that game i got to about 30 40 hours in and i got to a boss that i was three bosses in a row and i just couldn't just couldn't beat it um but it, the, that, the reason why i'm bringing that up is that was a 3ds game on a little cartridge and it was for well it's probably an 80 hour long game and it had speaking all the way through every time like a character spoke they would speak in real voice whereas this it was only really at the cutscenes where they would speak so that was a bit disappointing um for a, a game this big and great as well as i say uh, it's not quite the same as the first one. The first one I absolutely loved. This one it tries to be a few different games in one. Um, there's a bit of like world building in it where you have a castle where you have to like build up. But to be honest, at the end of it, I did get a bit addicted to that, and I was trying to like make my castle as big and as wonderful as I could. 
And then there was uh, these little battles where you did, where it's a bit like Pikmin, although I've not played Pikmin, so Nath can uh, probably correct me on that one. But yeah, it was, it was a, you had like a little uh, load of little troops that was with you, and you had to go and battle them with different little um, mechanisms and stuff like that. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, as I say, it just should have stuck with just the one gameplay mechanic of an RPG, and that would have been great for me. Um, right, next up we've got um, Family Guy Back to the Multiverse on the Xbox 360. I felt like I was giving the 360 not enough love <laughs> and I needed to play some games and I thought this one looks quite interesting. It's been something that I've wanted to play for a long time and it's pretty good. It's, if you like Family Guy that is anyway. So it's like it's basically like an extended cartoon if not a cartoon based on some cartoons already. I don't think it was though. But yeah it's like playing the cartoon basically in 3D. The graphics are wonderful. Especially for like this era. I mean, if they if they step this up to a PlayStation 4 like nowadays, it, you wouldn't even tell the difference, I don't think. But yeah, absolutely fantastic game. It is a bit repetitive um, and it is a bit basic compared to a lot of platformers and stuff like that, like 3D platformers. But um, yeah, pretty cool game. Like definitely recommend getting that because I think it's quite cheap nowadays. And next up, another thing, like playing cartoons. Uh, we've got Deponia. Uh, which I did talk about on my PlayStation 4 um, collection video. This is a pretty cool game uh, in the fact it is a point and click adventure that looks like you're playing the cartoon. Um, brilliant. Um, the th only thing is, like, the guy's obviously hung up with his ex uh, girlfriend, which is, he seems to be very apparent all the way through this game. <laughs> There's a lot of, like, ex girlfriend jibes on this one. So, uh, there's four, uh, three more games in the series, so I'd like to see what they all are like. It's about a 10-12 hour long game, so I'm not too sure if it's supposed to be episodic or if they are separate games, but yeah, pretty cool to get and pretty cool to play. So uh, next up, we have got the final one in the series, Dead Space 3. And I went into this thinking it was going to be terrible. I heard a lot of bad things about it, and... It's not terrible, it's just not as good as the originals. Uh, it loses a lot of what made the other ones good um, in the fact that it's just too big. Too big a game, too, too much going on. It's not dark and dingy enough compared to the first one. The first one was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed the second one too. Um, there was some quite scary scenes in the second one, I thought. Um, whereas this is just very watered down, it's just very in space. I, I like the graphics at the start because it went into a bit of a cyberpunk like little area, which was pretty cool. But yeah, it's just a shame they finished it off really bad. And I think they this really could do with a reboot. They should they need to do a Dead Space 4 and bring it back to how it should be. But I guess the storyline's getting too big, and I think that's the problem with, with it. It started off very isolated. And the storyline just made it bigger. Too big for what it is. So next up we've got Shaq Fu. What a fantastic game this is. Such a budget game. I mean, <laughs> I say this is a fantastic game. It's, it's very basic, very repetitive. But for what it is, it's bloody brilliant. And the Barack, Barack Fu, that's the free DLC that comes with this. I think it is on the disc as well, even though it doesn't say it on this one. But I do know it does say it in others. But yeah, that, that is brilliant. Uh, Barack Obama in a beat em up. <laughs> Flipping great. So yeah, definitely highly recommend this one. Uh, first time I played this, and that was Wii, Mario Kart Wii. So I actually not played this before, not even just once. So I thought I'd sit down with it and play it. And great, Mario Kart is just fun. Um, I did every match in the 50cc, every match in the five. Uh, 100 and going on to the 150 it was an absolute nightmare you just get to the finish line and then you just get blue shelled it, it, I don't know how you're supposed to win in this game once you get past there so have I completed it I mean I put a lot of time into it and I completed like fully completed like the first three courses which is sort of a completion it's just like it's just a the 150 cc is just another hardness so I've completed easy and medium, it's just hard I haven't completed. 
And yeah, it just got frustrating after a bit. I mean, it would probably be better to play this as a fr with friends and everything or online. But Jesus Christ, to play this on your own is just so frustrating. They definitely made it better on Mario Kart 8. I've still not played Mario Kart 7 yet, so that might, might have to do that soon. Next up, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale story. Or is it? Telltale series. So, I'm not a big fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy, I must say. Um, I do like it. I don't hate it. Um, I just don't think it's as good as a lot of people make it out to be. And to be honest, I think I enjoyed this more than the films. Um, cool looking graphics. It's just, the only problem is it's just Telltale. Um resting on the laurels and just doing the same old thing time and time again so yeah it's cool it's a cool game to play and it's a it's a nice fun eight hours or something um of gameplay so yeah <laughs> god I'm, I'm starting to sound really ne i get to like these negative patches don't i so we've got star wars force unleashed 2 i put this on i, I really wanted to love it. it it again it was a good game but very average um it just didn't feel like you was progressing like as a character and that was what made it a bit sad really but i've been told by a lot of people the star wars force unleashed one is a lot better like like a lot better than this so i if that's the case i, I if because i did enjoy it it just wasn't great i've got a feeling the first one's going to be fantastic so i do want to give that one a go probably this year i might even try it soon since we're in the Star Wars bug phase at the moment with the films out and everything. Now, a game that a lot of people do dislike and everything, but I actually really enjoyed this game, and that is Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. So, I'm not really a big fan of the Fallout series. It's just too dark and gloomy. Um, and the gameplay is just a bit too big and sparse of an open world. But this is a totally different game. This one's um, like an over-the-top, um, sort of like Diablo-style game, um, where you're going around leveling up and clearing up just hordes of like creatures and stuff all around the world. It's very basic compared to that, but I don't know, the humour and the, the characters that are in this, I don't know, it's probably not very Fallout-y. I know what Nafe's Retro said, this, I've not really played Fallout. <laughs> this is a fake, uh, but I really enjoyed it. It, it is very, it's just, it's just a cool, interesting game to play. So yeah, definitely recommend anyone to pick that up if you're into your Diablo kind of games. And another one I heard a lot of good things about, so I thought I'd put it on. I, I mean, I've had this for a few years now, uh, and that is Batman: The Brave and the Bold, the video game. So I think this is based on a cartoon. Uh, of the brave and the bold i'm not 100 percent uh there is a lot of cutscenes, animated cutscenes. that i don't know if they're real like just for this game or if they're from like tv series but this game is amazing it's sort of like a batman and robin style game for the mega drive uh, it's like playing a cartoon um where like you like it's a an action fighting platformer so it, obviously it's based for kids and everything like that. So it's not the hardest of games. There was one bit with some clocks that really confused the hell out of me what to do. But, oh my goodness, I keep opening these. I don't know why. But yeah, fantastic game. Definitely recommend everyone, if you like your action platformers, to pick this up and play it. Um, next up, talking about action platformers. Ne Finally, I've never played this game before. And I've been wanting to for for bloody years uh, and that is um the magical i try to find what the name of it's called the magical quest uh mickey starring mickey mouse um yeah this this is the super fam conversion obviously there it is out on the english uh super nintendo as well but obviously this is what i collect this is what i love the boxes for and we're not talking about boxes we're talking about the game and the game i remember seeing it in like all the magazines just thinking I can't wait to play that. It just looks like playing a cartoon. The fact that you can change between like different characters as well, like a fireman, uh, Robin Hood, um, is it a magician or something? Just really intrigued me because it was something that was different than just going around and jumping on people's heads. Um, playing it, what, 20 odd years later? What do I think? Yeah, it's good. Um, it's really good. 
it's a bit shorter than I was expecting to be honest I thought it was going to be a lot longer and it's going to look quite easy but not too easy that there is a few like real heavy like um, spikes in gameplay like where it gets quite hard but it's very doable I mean I did it so <laughs> it must be and that's it I mean I've played a lot more games especially you see a lot less retro games in these kind of videos because I'll play them and I can't complete them because I'm flipping terrible at them whereas modern games are they're quite a lot easier. They're a lot more forgiving. I've just opened another game again. Right, next up, I picked up this up last year. It only came out last year. Shakedown Hawaii, which is the um, sequel to Hotline... Hotline... Something else. But yeah, anyway, fantastic game. It's sort of like um, a GTA sort of clone, like where it's like the original GTA is where it's like, again, over the top, um, where you running down the streets and stealing vehicles and humor in it is flipping amazing and then it's got like a bit a bit like uh, I'm not not too sure how to call it but basically where you you're buying up buildings and stuff like that to get money so you you buy buildings to rent them out it's like that sounds really boring it is, it is the boring bit of the game but then as well it's quite addictive because like every day uh, you get like a report to say how much money you've earned that day through making rackets um, Where like you go into a store and like you basically take over that store um, With force and then you set like a price how much they have to pay you every day or week or whatever it is And then you buy up all the different like buildings and then you rent them out and then <laughs> Sounds boring, but it's not because it's like lots of humor in it. it it's fantastic game again I preferred the first one uh, it didn't have all of this extra guff to it but both games are amazing in their own right um, and this one's a bit more I think the other one's a bit more 8-bit styled this one's a bit more 16-bit styled but yeah amazing game amazing game uh, sequels we're talking about usually the last ones where I've said the previous ones are better well this one quite relevant now actually because uh, the, of the TV show um, but yeah I played Witcher 3 last year and I absolutely fell in love with it a lot of my friends was telling me like the Witcher and the Witcher 2 at the time were the best games in the world like they always played them on the PC though because um, a few a couple of my friends all play PC games so I always had this in the back burner I can't remember if I when I picked this up um, I think I might have had a few just to get condition right. I know definitely did with PlayStation 4. But yeah, fantastic game. But I wish I played this one first than the third one. Because going back to this one, it feels a lot very clunky. And I'm missing a lot of the like the world like the um the the scenes where like basically you you're going into like different places and everyone recognizes you and like you have like a full on like world to explore whereas this is it's very like segregated compared to the, the to the new one which obviously that's all to do with the size of the discs the the power of the systems and everything like that but it's a pretty good game i don't see how it was the best game ever at the time because i do feel like there was a few better games than this um the frame rate's a bit choppy on it <laughs> Yeah, if you've not played either of these two yet, play this one first and then play the third one. Like, you'll not regret it because they are brilliant games, especially if you've got into the TV series as well. I know a lot of people starting to watch that and then go, oh, well, let's try this game. But then that's because of that, the games are going up in value because uh, everyone wants to play them. And talking about uh, games based on franchises, Ghostbusters for the PlayStation 3. This has been remade for the PlayStation 4 and uh, Switch, I believe, as well. So I played the PlayStation 3 one uh, because it's what I had. <laughs> and I think I paid a pound for it instead of paying 30 quid or something stupid. But yeah, so this is basically Ghostbusters 3. It's got all the actors in it from the films all doing a new storyline. Although I say new storyline, it's still in the old hotel and everything like that. There's a lot of... Stuff from the TV series, 
but like done a bit differently but i think that's just what ghostbusters is it's just like a rehash of everything so looking forward to seeing the new film the new film looks pretty interesting um at least it, yeah it, it's it's taking its own take on it instead of like continuing from the original franchise oh next up a, a game again i've had this for quite some time i think and i'm so glad i've actually got around to playing it and that is klonoa so i actually played the uh, the sequel klonoa 2 last year i think it was but this one hands down beats it like it's so good um very basic for some people i would say oh flipping should have opened that this come out <laughs> there we go it's back in back in now um yeah it's very cutie the the noise the the animated noises that they do is uh, could get a bit annoying for a lot of people but i don't know i just really enjoyed this game it's very like I say very cutesy so it shouldn't be something that a nearly 40 year old should enjoy but <laughs> i did and uh, i'm not ashamed of it to be fair um so next up we have got another game I, i'm not too sure if i played this as a kid i'm sure i do remember seeing some remembering seeing some of them puzzles at the start i think if i did i played it on the playstation one but yeah this is blazing dragons if uh, you've not figured it out already so this is a point and click i'm not opening it it's a sign game there'll be discs everywhere um yeah so it's a point and click adventure and it's got um terry jones from whatever some comedy <laughs> people are shouting at me right now um but yeah anyway it's great english humor point and click and there's some tricky bits that i did have to use a guide on like all point and click games i seem to do because i'm just rubbish at them but i just enjoy the stories and it's good to see how far you can go without using the guide so yeah great game and it's not too expensive really i think the playstation one game actually costs more um next up i finally beat it a, a, a retro game i finally beat I, I don't know if i completed it as a kid i might have done with a friend but the game in question is super pang i just had a day where i thought right right that is it i'm gonna do it and it's like i'll just be going through levels without dying and then like i'll get to one level where it's like it'll take three lives off me <laughs> and it's like oh killer um but yeah fantastic game brilliant i love it it's one of my favorites in fact it's just such good arcade fun i'm terrible at it really but i just you know sometimes you get yourself into that mindset where you just know you need to complete it you need to complete that game because you keep saying it's your favorite and you've never completed it before and another game i actually played recently and um no i've, I've played before and i i think it was is when i first got my vita anyway what game is it dragon's crown flipping great game so it always intrigued me and I, when i first got my vita i actually got this and i played it and i got to like a certain point and i it was really fun and everything and then i just kept dying um, but I just did not understand how this kind of game played and I think that's what it is so I recently went, put on my Vita to play another game and uh, When I did it, it, it just wouldn't turn on so I, I read online to See what to do and they basically said it's some it's some kind of like memory uh, cache glitch or something and what you need to do is you'll need to unplug the battery and plug it back in and then it sorts it out so I, when I did that I um, I opened up my whole Vita and put it apart again and put it back together again but the problem is I didn't take out the memory card and when I did that it snapped off the corner of it and it just never worked again so I lost all my saves and everything like that and yeah, that was a 64 gigabyte memory card so if you know about them they cost more than the flipping vita themselves which is a bit sad really uh but yeah because of that that just thought, made me think right i'm just going to start this again from the start and then see what to do and it, it tweaked i just understood how to play these kind of games again because i had let's say i only really started playing games again like modernish games uh probably about six seven years ago really um i got a 360 I am um, when I was collecting my NES games and it just made me I, I didn't really have many games like this on the 360 it was only when I've been getting the PlayStation 4 and the Vita 
when I've started playing more games a bit like this. So this is a, a sort of like an RPG, sort of like street, um, a Golden Axe kind of game. So it's a Vanillaware. I mean, if you know Vanillaware, a lot of their games are like this. And i played a few of them since then. So uh, Odin Sphere, um, what's the other one? Miss something behind me up there, Mrs. Sharon, the one on the Wii, Muramasa, that's it. Um, and I played them, completed them, and then it just made me go back to this and actually really enjoy it for the game what it is. There's a lot of grinding in it, involved in it, to get to what you need to do. But, I mean, some of us people, we like our grind, grinding in games. So, yeah, Dragon's Crown, finally beat it, finally. So, yeah, it's nice to go back to sometimes and finally get beat them games that's been annoying you for all them years next up we've got infamous um again this is one i played on the playstation 4 first uh, second son beautiful game beautiful game um and so I, I i had this and it just intrigued me to play it and i went back totally enjoyed it but yeah i mean the game obviously is nowhere near as good as a PlayStation 4 one, but it's still a lot of fun to be had in this game. Uh, even now, again, just if you're going to play these infamous games, try and do it from the start because it's harder to go back. But even even so, I still really enjoyed it. I think the second one might be better. This game. This game. Oh my goodness. This has probably been the best, favouritest limited run game I've had for a long time. For a lot of reasons and that is the messenger the packaging is beautiful um yeah i don't want to say too much about it because i want i'd like people to play it because it is a really good game but basically you go from 8-bit to 16-bit and then it changes things up again and yeah it's a really good game it gets a bit tricky at certain points but it's definitely doable uh beautiful sort of ninja guiding sort of game Sort of, not really, sort of like Metro, Metroidvania bits into it as well. Uh, next up, we've got the Time Boken game. I, I shoot, I've actually completed this six months. Um, so, yeah, this is like a cutesy, sort of like Parodicy style shoot 'em up where it, you're basically a tank and it you, you play it, and um, every time you complete a stage, it forces you to use a different. Um, ship or tank or whatever it is and you have about five of them each time and then once you get to a certain point it adds up uh, adds another three that of all totally different weapons and style of ga gameplay so it's really good in that fact where it, it doesn't get you to uh, just do the same thing over and over again like some games like you you get a favorite ship and that's all you play whereas this you can't really do that you can pretty much but not totally so yeah it's a pretty cool game and it's really easy so I recommend that one it's quite cheap as well talk about easy this was not easy at all uh, so this is dynamite decker or as we know it in england uh die hard arcade so i actually played this one although because this one's a lot cheaper than the english one but i do have the english one as well because i'm stupid i just kind of like to have them both this i got this really cheap i think it was like a tenner or something or 12 quid maybe um but yeah i heard this was better so i thought i would play this one i don't think it was it's very hard and it's, it's not so much the gameplay that's hard it's just that when you play it you you're locked in an animation so it it's hard when you start something someone can come and fight you from the other side and kill you so that's where it makes it tricky and I missed this off off my uh, PlayStation 4 collection video because I actually had it downstairs um, and because I was playing it, I suppose, at the time. And that game is Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise. So this one, quite an interesting game. Quite an interesting I keep saying that, don't I? Um, I'm not 100% sure if I really liked it. I enjoyed it, but it's very repetitive. It's... Basically, it's based on the Yakuza engine and obviously the Fist of the North Star franchise. And it really, it's it's one that I hated at the start. And this is why I don't know if I really liked it. Because I just didn't get, again, I don't think I really got it. Um, and then later on in the game, I understood how the fighting mechanics worked. Where as well, like I had to level up. And not only that, <laughs> I got addicted to going into the bars and you can become a barman and make drinks for people 
so you do that by shaking the controller shaking the controller yeah I'm waiting for insert comment there <laughs> shake the controller do like loads of little things and it gets quite tricky at some of them um, and I was doing that for hours and then it just made the gameplay a lot easier um, yeah so you base it with this you need to level up a lot and there's some really cool mechanic where there's a there is another bar later on that you find and you have to find go out into the desert and your car and then find these arcade machines so you find uh what you what is it which it, which ones was it afterburner outrun and uh what was the other one space harrier and then you find a mark three master system basically but the japanese one uh sega mark three and then you find fist of the north star on cartridge and you go home and play that which is pretty cool you play the original ones so i was playing them more than i was i was enjoying them more than i was actually enjoying the game so if you like your old arcade games get this because it's quite fun to be honest as well um i think i must have put about 15 20 hours in and i got to the last boss and then after i, I died on the last boss and then i realized i needed to level up more and i think i put another 10 to 15 more hours into it after I got to the last boss and died and enjoyed it more because I realized how to play it more and it opened up the game a bit more I would have missed out a lot if I just beat the boss that first time so yeah it's, it's one of them intriguing games I don't know I've enjoyed I'm glad I played it really is what I'm trying to say so uh, I got a Master System converter thing from my Mega Drive so I can play some of my Master System games again and the first one, well, the first one I completed, at least anyway, uh, is Govelius. So finally completed this. I had this before, and I never completed it. Um, it's not got a hang tag. Terrible. I prefer it that way. <laughs> so um, this is basically Zelda 1 and 2 mixed together and put into one Sega Mega Drive game. Is it as good as them? Probably not together as an all-in-one game this is a fantastic game love it absolutely love this game um so it's got like the snakes from like wonder boy in it and yeah it's like a it starts off as a over-the-top um sort of rpg well not rpg it's it's an action rpg so you do do leveling up and everything that you don't do in zelda um so that makes it a bit easier and then you have to get like little you have to do little tasks to get further and everything like that, find little things. And yeah, really good game. Uh, and then you go into the dungeons and they're like uh, like the Zelda 2 side-scrolling ones. And then you've also got like sort of like a, uh, a vertical scrolling shooter style one <laughs> as well. So it's a really interesting game. And I'm really glad I have put my time and completed it. And it's really got me into wanting to play more Master System games flipping love the system this is the system i'm going to be focusing in more this year so yeah nearly there now guys so next up another game i kind of love to hate <laughs> and that is the bard's tale so i've never played the bard's tale before and this is the what is it remastered and re-snarkled one so basically i don't think it's remastered i just think it just put the playstation 2 version onto a vita car really um so pretty good game I, I really enjoyed the humor and I re that's what made me progress through the game because the game got very hard I don't know if it was me not knowing what to do again it could be because I'm flipping stupid um, but I got to a point where I was enjoying the, the fighting and the, the fighting mechanics and everything again this is a bit like a Diablo or that uh, Fallout Brotherhood game that I was playing earlier and whereas I, I do, I love them kind of games, but as I say, I, I, I was getting all this money and I had nowhere to spend it. And I don't know if I, I was looking for shops and everything like that to see if I can upgrade my armor and everything like that. I leveled up completely to the top and I kept dying. And I think I got to about the fourth or fifth world where I would nearly put this down. But then I found that there was a cheat to replenish your health. You press start and then you did like this button combination just like in the olden days like we used to and that just got me further and got me to progress through the whole game so in that respect it's got like the old school mechanics of a playstation 2 game 
Whereas if you put the cheats in, it makes it more up to date and more modern like a PlayStation 4 game. So yeah, really enjoyed it for the game, like for the story and everything like that. Really cheesy humour, really cheesy humour. It's flipping great. <laughs> uh, but the gameplay is too hard. So, unless you put the cheat in. And then it gets a bit too samey. So, next up, you've not seen me pick this one up yet. This one is, I actually picked this up on... Uh, what's it called? Black Friday. I think it, I think I paid ten pound for it, maybe eleven quid. Um, and that game is God of War. So this is what I finished the year off with. Uh, this is the last game I completed, and uh, I was telling Dylan and everything because he was asking me how I was how, what I was thinking about it. And yeah, I didn't like it to the start with. With um, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong, um, but I don't know. I just, it just didn't feel like, well, it's not like a God of War game. It's totally different. Um, but it just felt a bit averagely, like, it looked beautiful, but there was, it was, everything was too sparse. You had to walk too far to get to the next enemies. But as, as you level up and get better, it did make the game a lot more enjoyable. Um, one once you started exploring a bit more and realized it's not a god of war game because it's not a god of war game and i think that's what i needed to do i needed to get that notion out of my head <laughs> because i just kept thinking too much about that but yeah really good game and really beautiful um i've got playstation 4 pro so i put it on and i thought the playstation was actually going to explode when i was playing it it just made so much like loud noises so a bit scared to play that. It's not. I mean, it's used to me playing 2D platformers, for God's sake. I've got PlayStation 4 Pro, and I don't use it to its full maximum. <laughs> but yeah, um, I chose, um, I think it was performance over graphics with this one. So it was the 60 frames per second rather than the beautiful, the, the better looking graphics. I just felt it, it played a lot better to do it that way. If anyone played it in the other way, let me know. That'd be quite interesting to see because I I'd imagine a lot of people picked this up on Black Friday because I do know it was definitely ten quid at some places. Um, it was such a bargain to get, but I I wanted to have the one that wasn't the essentials. So nice one, I finally got it. So yeah, a bit of a pick. Oh, it's got to be a pick up in any every one of my videos. So that was my pick up of this video. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I played. Um, I tallied it all up, well, previously tallied it all up. I completed, out of 52, bit of a drum roll, 53 games. I just flipping made it. So if you want to discount that flipping Mario Kart one, I've still managed one game a week. So I, I think that's quite good, quite good going. And as I say, I really enjoy having this little challenge just to keep me going because a lot a few of these games i would have given up on like that bard's tale i would if it wasn't for the 52 game challenge i probably would have just given up and gone to the next one and it's just nice to have that completion in your little pocket and as i say i like to ha talk about some of these games i have rushed it a, a bit i'm just thinking next time uh shall i do this because I, I did this uh six monthly so I split up in the half of the year maybe i should split it up every three every three months maybe not three months uh three a year maybe what's that every four months i might just do that instead uh going forward because it's something i will be doing again so anyway if you enjoyed that give me a thumbs up i'm trying a new thing you see new year new new, new me give me a thumbs up and if you've not subscri subscribed already give me a sub so thanks for watching bye